Witness tampering. The crash happened earlier this month on Waisengsong Road, claiming the life of Anna Marie Flores. A dead adult man is under arrest after officers with the Mindanya Drug Task Force and SWAT carried out a search warrant on his home early today. It happened around 6 a.m. 34-year-old Marvin Sangalang Picasso is charged with possession of a Schedule II controlled substance, possession of a Schedule II controlled substance with the intent to distribute, and possession of explosives. Investigators found an undisclosed amount of the drug ice, drug paraphernalia, money, and commercial grade fireworks in the home. Well, the Supreme Court orders a new election, but it won't be your typical political balloting. Instead, the vote will decide the new presidency of the Guam Bar Association. Nestor Lacanto reports. The High Court ruled that the Bar Association made errors in conducting its election for new officers last December. The voting was challenged by attorney Gloria Lujan Rudolph, who was edged out in a tight race for president by attorney Jackie Terlahi. The justices found that, among other errors, the ballot materials did not allow for voter anonymity. The court also noted that the bar's election committee had also determined that as many as 71 ballots were spoiled because they lacked a name, a decipherable signature, or some other unqualified defect. Bar Association Vice President Michael Pangolinan says while the committee believes it substantially complied with the election bylaws and took measures to cure any defects, they appreciate the Supreme Court's guidance and will comply with the order. Pangolinan says they hope to begin mailing out ballots next week for the new election. The Supreme Court has ordered the balloting be completed before an annual meeting that will be held on August 25th in which the new officers will be installed. For Guam's News Network, I'm Nestor Leconto. More details of sex abuse in the church and the Boy Scouts surface. 44-year-old A.W.C. alleges he was sexually molested and raped by now-deceased priest Father Ray Takaira. The alleged incidents occurred in the mid-1980s when A.W.C. was in the 7th grade during sleepovers at the rectory. There, the priest allegedly touched the boy's privates and penetrated him. The second complaint named Scout Leader Edward Pereira. 56-year-old T.P.J. alleges the incidents occurred in the early 1970s when he was around 9 or 10 years old. Pereira allegedly molested him during car rides and locked him in a storage room where he was raped. Both plaintiffs are represented by attorney David Lujan. An 80-acre piece of land in Jigo may be conveyed back to the federal government. But as Issa Baz reports, the Guam Department of Education hopes to keep that land for a potential middle college. Superintendent John Fernandez hopes to keep control over an 80-acre property in Jigo that may be given back to the federal government, but could instead be used for local educational purposes. The property will be one of the main topics of discussion during a visit with federal officials next month. This is property that had been um, conveyed from the USDOE to the Guam Department of Education uh, probably in, in about 1992, I believe. And the purpose was to allow uh, GDOE to use it for an educational uh, function of some sort. However, the property was not used by GDOE for roughly 25 years. And now the U.S. Department of Education is hoping to get it back. Yeah, part of it has been just to collect our records and see what happened to this, to this property and why it wasn't used for so long. I do know that uh, you know, one of the complications is that there are three water wells that were constructed by Guam Water Works Authority that are currently on the site. And so I know that there's a, you know, there is a, uh, that well operation that's very critical uh, to GWA. While a certain radius around these wells cannot be developed, Fernandez says the rest of the land may be used for a new facility or educational initiative. And part of, part of that potential new initiative may be to work with uh, the Guam Community College on, their, on a middle college concept for the north. The middle college concept was introduced by GCC earlier this year and would allow students to graduate from high school with both a diploma and a college level associates or certificates degree for free. However, the program is still in the planning phases. He will be discussing the issue with the Guam Education Board, adding a board member will be accompanying him on the trip to the USDOE Federal Property Division next month. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Issa Baza. Stick around for more news here on Primetime. You're watching KUAM. There are more ways to experience KUAM News than any other source on Guam. Download the KUAM News app for your Apple or Android device for 24-7 news, sports, videos, weather, streaming with KUAM radio, and important news alerts. And stay connected at home with Guam's first app for Apple TV. 
All available now from the App Store. Have you gotten paid yet? That's the premium automatic insurance deduction plan from Calvo's Insurance. Paid simplifies your home and auto insurance. No down payment. No more long lines. And you can stretch your payments up to 12 months. Pay is convenient. It deducts from your payroll, your checking account, or your credit card. With Paid, you get up to 65% off your car insurance and enjoy lifestyle club discounts. Life can be easier when you get paid. Call Calvo's Insurance today and save on your home and auto insurance. Samsung Galaxy S8 for just $99 or the S8 Plus for just $199 at ITE. Hyundai Summer Clearance Event is happening now. At Guam's Best Dealership, Cars Plus and Mighty. With financing as low as 1.99%. There's no better time to drive a new Hyundai Accent, ranked highest in initial quality, starting at just $11,995. Or the new Hyundai Elantra, starting at $16,995. SUV lovers, check out the new Hyundai Tucson, starting at $19,995. Plus, every new Hyundai gets Guam's Best Warranty, 10 years, 100,000 miles. It's our Hyundai Summer Clearance Event. Going on now at Cars Plus and Mighty. Cars Plus, driven by you. Oh! Oh! Ruby Tuesday puts the O in dinner combos with Garden Bar Plus entrees for only $20.99. Choose salmon moco, petite sirloin, or pesto chicken pasta only at Ruby Tuesday. Oh! Connect with KUAM News. Find us on your favorite social media platform. Follow us and stay in the know with Guam's news leader. They've come a very long way. Guam's war survivors passing down their stories of what they recall when Japanese troops took over the island. Tonight, we bring you another one of our survivors, my grandma, Maria Fujikawa Delgado. Started in 1941, December 8, 1941. How old were you then? I was only six years old. It's the attack many of our Mononku no doubt find hard to relive. The people are just go crazy because the Japanese airplane was flying above us, and then somebody is yelling that they bombed the Sumai Bay already, where all the militaries. So we have to run and hide on the this is the first time in my 31 years I got the chance to hear firsthand her story when the Japanese invaded Guam. So the major thing many sought was refuge. Grandma and her family loaded up in a jeep and went north to Jigo. It's a deep in a, uh, area where the airplane cannot see us because mm. the, the trees are tall. It's a uh, evil trees. So you had to hide. You had to hide. Yes, we have to, because they keep bombing. Once the Japanese took over, she says the Fujikawa family then headed towards the capital. So we stayed there until they decided that the war will be more or worse for them because they have to fight now at that time and the Americans are coming to, to what you call that, to get... To help you. Mm -hmm. So that's the place, the time that we started to be moved out to Maningo. In case you didn't pick up on the name, it too is Japanese. It's just that I'm always scared too because I'm so young and I don't know how, what am I going to happen to me with the Japanese. And, but we were well, well protected by, by the, the Japanese because we are Afghans and Japanese and our father is pure. Fujikawa. Yes, yeah, so the respect. Her father, Masayoshi Antonio Fujikawa, was a businessman, though not a hostile. He eventually fled Guam when the U.S. showed up, separated from his family for 18 years after the island was liberated. All hard times to bear, but led her to Aganya Heights, where she lives to this day. Don't you know that I'm the one that babysat you? I have eight, and there's something to put to me here when you're here? Yeah, I see. So 
and brought up our family alongside my grandpa Francisco Delgado. He ended up with the camp. That was the story that Yosko always mentioned about it. Grandpa passed away two years back, but not before my sister Nicole got a bit of his story on tape. We were forced to go down to the plaza where the plaza is, the plaza is mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They registered us and they put a ban on our arm. And that ban has to be there all the time. White ban. Grandpa then recalled being constantly on the move and was even separated from his family for some time when the war broke out. It was a way of life many on Guam were forced into until the U.S. came and fought back. And Grandpa, like others, went to Menengen before it was all over. For several months we stayed there. I see a lot of dead Japanese in, um, in the water right down in the river. Uh, one on top of the uh, mango tree hanging his head down. Traumatic and life-changing moments that gives us all the more reason to always remember our survivors. Guam is just a few days away from commemorating its 73rd liberation. Yeah, and over the years, liberators have graciously returned to the island, honored to participate. Valerie Marigue has the story. He will forever remain a part of Guam's history. 91-year-old Jean Bell is one of Guam's liberators. We were the replacements that came in after the 3rd Marine Division made the initial landing. This year, Bell is one of two Grand Marshals for the island's 73rd Liberation Day Parade. He was a corporal in the 3rd Marine Division and came to Guam in 1944 when he was just 17 after the invasion. From the time of his arrival in July 1944, Bell says he went on eight-man patrols throughout the southern part of the island, keeping an eye out for the enemy until October of 1944 when they made the final push for the island. Information was that there was approximately 5,000 enemy remaining. So the whole 3rd Marine Division started at the south end and went the entire 28 miles to the north end and eliminated most of the enemy at that time. After that, Bell would spend much of his time in Talafofo, where his training base was located. Bell would head to Iwo Jima and eventually mainland Japan, but by then the war would end. It, the island was completely devastated. It's, uh, it's unbelievable uh, how... Uh, it was just, uh, you can't explain how a devastation can be so bad. Donald Hughes is also a part of Guam's liberation and will also be a Grand Marshal at this year's parade. Hughes was a seaman first class aboard the USS MacGuffin, a troop transport ship. All the Marines and the soldiers into the beaches, dropped them off and turned around, got, went back, got another load and hauled them into the beaches. Hughes went on to do the same in the Battle of Okinawa. He too was only 17. Both Bell and Hughes have participated in several memorial ceremonies for those who died in World War II. Today they also met with Governor Eddie Calvo and sat down to a complimentary lunch at the Dusatani. They are honored to be Grand Marshals in this year's parade and are grateful for the island hospitality that has been extended to them. Adaloop is the parade starting route. The parade kicks off at 10 a.m. on Friday. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Valerie Maige. Thanks, Val. Well, just days after a drone crashed near the Post 5 unit inside the Department of Corrections, it was announced today that legislation is being drafted to designate, designate no-fly zones and propose stiff penalties for anyone caught using the device within 500 feet of security-sensitive areas and law enforcement facilities. Senator Will Castro is the bill's author. DEPCOR continues its internal affairs investigation to track down the owner of the drone. In response, GPD spokesperson officer A.J. Balahaja, who is also a drone operator, tells KUAM local legislation is necessary, adding that the FAA also has guidelines that drone enthusiasts need to know. A proposal to incrementally raise the minimum wage be beginning this October will go up for a public hearing on Wednesday. Speaker B.J. Cruz encourages residents to attend the hearing on Bill 20, which would raise the minimum wage to, from $9.20 an hour by October and $10.10 an hour the following year. Board Chair Bobby Shringy said the Chamber of Commerce will be in attendance. It is a resolve of the government to truly pursue an increase in the minimum wage. Then let's look at what's palatable, what's not going to create the most adverse impact towards any small business, because that's what we're looking at, the smaller businesses. Senator Jim Espaldon has also introduced an alternative approach that would raise the minimum wage to $9.20 by January of next year. The hearing begins at 9 a.m., at 2 p.m., and at 6 p.m.
Bill 104, also known as the Anti-Skimming Act of 2017, went up for public hearing this week. Senator Frank Ogan Jr. commending his colleagues for introducing the bill because there are currently no laws in place that would allow for bans on skimmers. Fraud examiner and UOG professor Dr. Ron McNinch responds to this bill. Uh, fraud is, is, is a kind of hidden crime that we simply haven't put the emphasis on to protect the community yet. And I think that, that laws like this will certainly get that conversation going and the public will become uh, more aware that, that they can be victims of these kinds of crimes. Chair, Madam Chair, to yourself and our fellow colleagues who brought up some issues. McNinch is also hoping lawmakers establish a fraud crimes registry similar to that of a sex offender registry, which could potentially stop repeat offenders. Sports is coming up next with Chris Barnett, but first, here's weather. My family was tired of seeing red from internet data caps. We switched to GTA and life is good again. Sure, it took a bit of time for some of us to adjust to our newfound internet freedom. Don't turn off the show. How does it end? Relax, honey. The data limits are gone. You can watch the whole show now. But we're all happy with the change, and I think it's even earned me some cool points. You rock, Mom. That's right. It's getting lit up in here. How about that? Okay. So I need to finish this homework now. Okay, I'm done. My son, though, he's in the midst of a serious rebellion. Rebelling against an alien invasion, that is. Oh, yeah. Free yourself. Switch to GTA Home Internet today. Truly unlimited with no data caps or additional usage fees. The Down Syndrome Association of Guam exists to support families of individuals with Down Syndrome. We're a group of parents who have children with Down Syndrome and know the joys and challenges of raising them. For more information about the health, development, and education of a child or adult with Down Syndrome, please contact Vicki Ariola at 472-6114. How do you want to live? As a decent person? Good husband. Is that it? Good? Of course not. King of the Hill? Better. Top of your game? Win. All powerful. Like a boss. Like a pro. We couldn't agree more. We are professional grade. Step up to GMC with 17% below MSRP on specially equipped Sierra SLT models. That's nearly 11000 on this Sierra. Visit Autospot GMC today. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J. Off of day, Guam. Chris Barnett with Sports Montes. Woohoo! Tuesday. Half a day. It's Marxist. Proudly brought to you by Triple J. Hey, on the way, Guam's American Ninja Warrior is back. But first, let's kick it off with a little bit of Trench Challenge. Your chance to get down in the trenches and hit an official qualifier for the Obstacle Course Race World Championships is less than a month away. Trench Challenge. Guam's 5K Obstacle Race set for a Sunday stroll August 13th at the Guam International Raceway in Jigo. With online registration at trenchevents.com, sign up for the Recreational Solo Division, 5-Man Challenge, or Elite Division, or take a stab at the Marianas Trench Throwdown CrossFit Competition. Tackle a gritty course for a great cause. We're very excited. Uh, I know last year when we donated the money to um, Special Olympics, they actually took the money and used it for new equipment. So it made us feel really good that uh, it was used for a good purpose, and uh, we'd like to help do that again this year. Uh, get ready for some of that new new on this year's course. We've got some really exciting stuff this year. We, um, we're going to be debuting a, um, a giant 30-foot tall water slide. And um, we've got some new rig setups uh, with some rings, some ropes, and a cargo net uh, A-frame uh, up 
several different uh, items that are going to be new this year. Uh, we also have some um, Atlas stones that uh, competitors are going to be lifting and um, going a distance and bringing back. So it'll, it's a combination of not just um, agility but strength as well. As you may recall, Team KUAM joined forces with Special Olympics Guam to face the Trench Challenge course United. Special Olympic athletes did come out last year, and they not only completed the course, but they, they tackled all the obstacles, and they were actually quite impressive. So they are coming back out again this year with their group, and uh, we it's going to be a great, great event. Our U18 girls national fast pitch softball team leaves Guam tomorrow to represent the island at the PGF National Championships held in California. Here are the remaining players on the team heading out for the competition. Half a day, Guam. My name is Juliana Nelson. I'm 18 years old from the village of Jigo, and I play first base and outfield for Team Guam. Half a day, Guam. My name is Sana Cepeda. I'm 19 years old from the village of Dedido, and I'm the catcher for Team Guam. Half a day, Guam. My name is Colleen Kanata. I'm 19 years old from the village of Sinahanya, and I play shortstop for Team Guam. Guam's original American Ninja Warrior competes tonight on American Ninja Warrior KUAM TV 8, 7 p.m. Billy Never Ready, always ready, making his Ninja Warrior debut back in 2013, and he has since made it his dream to grace the local broadcast airwaves again on the world's most famous obstacle course event. Never Ready also auditioned last year for American Ninja Warrior. He'll face new obstacles in the Bouncing Spider, Rail Runner, and the Ninjago Roll. Tonight, 7 p.m., KUAM TV 8, Team Billy. We got this, Guam. Week 7 results from the Bud Light Women's Futsal League. Quality Tulip snuck into the number 2 spot with an 18-0 win over FC Familia, finishing the regular season with a superior goal difference over the Bank of Guam Lady Strikers and Hyundai. Number 1 Personal Finance Center Lady Crushers finished the season undefeated with a win over the UOG Tritons by way of forfeit. Hyundai received a bye in the final week of regular season matches. Women's futsal takes a week-long break before single elimination playoffs begin July 30th at the Guam Sports Complex Gym. First Class Petty Officers Association, the Guam National Guard Counter Drug Program, and the Campaign Drug Free U.S. Naval Hospital donated sports equipment to the Judiciary of Guam and the Aganyites Gym for use in the Juvenile Drug Court Recreational Therapy Program. Thank you. Some of the equipment donated was basketballs, footballs, and volleyballs. All right, Tuesday. Hey, until tomorrow, my man Double D joins us here on the Sports Set. My name's Chris. You keep on shining, Guam. Adios! It's Nissan's Stay Fit Sales Event. Fitness is important. You Nissan service pros are like trainers for my car's fitness. Now check out this hard racing deal on the Versa Note starting at just $88 per pay period. Versa Note, family fund transportation starting at just $88 per pay period. And your new car fit kit includes free service, free car washes, and your own personal fitness watch. Keeping it fit and clean with free car washes leaves me more time to focus on keeping myself fit. The Stay Fit Sales Event. Find out more at Nissan Upper Tumon or online at NissanGuam.com. At Island Cancer Center, we treat our patients and their families like our family. We have all been touched by cancer, and it is important to feel comfortable and secure under the care of our health professionals. You can count on us for skilled cancer specialists, the most advanced cancer-fighting technology on the island, and a commitment to caring for you or your loved one with compassion, respect, and empathy. Our family, treating your family. Island Cancer Center, located on Guam Medical Plaza. Visit us at islandcancercenter.com or call 646-3363. Like you can't choose who sits next to you. But at least you can choose two of your favorites from McDonald's McPick 2 menu. Choose any two at McDonald's for $3. A McDouble sandwich, a medium fry, or a medium drink. McPick 2 for $3 for a limited time. My job is to protect. My job is to defend. My job is to be tough. That's why I train. That's why I need those who are tough around me. That's why I need a truck like this. Are you ready for a big boy truck?
America's best-selling truck for 40 years straight. When you're ready for a big boy truck, Triple J Ford is the place. You need to get yourself a big boy truck. Happy Liberation Day Guam from Autospot Buick GMC. And before we close out the news tonight, our latest round of birthday shoutouts from the Coldstone Creamery Birthday Club. Zoe Jane Parrish Cruz, happy sixth birthday. Love always from her family, mom, dad, her brother, Thomas J, baby, sister, Bobby Joe. Happy second birthday, Aniko Megumi Serrano. We love you and miss you so much. Renata Berdalio, a big happy birthday to Renata Berdalio. Love your daughters, Issa, Nina, son, Raph, and entire familia. Happy birthday to you, Cassidy, Megan Napati Cruz. Hey. And remember, if you want to be a part of the Cold Stone Creamery Birthday Club, register online at KUEF.com. Include your photo, your name, and your birthday. And that's going to do it for us here on the news desk, but stay tuned. Issa's next. Closed captioning is brought to you by IT&E Life in Motion. Health, Home, and Lifestyle. Presented by Paradise Fitness Center. Changing lives.